This episode of The Republic is brought to you by Netflix. For a free 30-day trial, head on over to netflix.com slash GameBreakerTV. GameBreakerTV. What's up, everybody? Happy Monday, and welcome to The Republic. I'm Gary Gannon. This is episode 116 of The Republic for December 10th, 2012. This week on the show, we've got dev quotes, dev quotes, and more dev quotes. Joining me to dissect them, as always, from his uh, Sith... What was that Sith chair called? What was that thing called? Sith Meditation Throne. Yes. Yeah. From his Sith Meditation Throne, which is black. That's right. Larry Everett, how are you, sir? I'm good. We down Kefis and and the Terror from Beyond. I think just you might be stuck in Terror from Beyond or something. I don't know. This yeah. is like weird seeing you just <laughs> in like this undisclosed location. I'll have some. I, I swear I'll have something back here uh, next week. Just couldn't get it up this week. Oh God! I just go to Justin. Just go to Justin. <laughs> darkhater.com it's mr justin low what a way to start a show <laughs> segway yeah, uh, no I, I i don't have a great background like his you know yeah, you do like stuff. we're yeah, used to I this know. one you got you yeah, the this witcher up there you got all, all right. kinds of swag and little got figurines the blinds that my dog screws around with during the show it's awesome yeah, yeah it's great yeah all right um I said right, go to Justin. So let's, uh, <laughs> let's move on. Let's start the show. Uh, so this week, gameplay analyst uh, Jonathan Crow answered some of the community's questions. First up, he uh, he was asked if the uh, the boss to player death ratio had changed in explosive conflict since patch one point five. Do you guys know? I mean, did explosive conflict see changes to try in in one did in changes in one point five to address this? Do we know for sure? In, in well, in one point five, they added uh, you know nightmare mode, but uh, I'm not. Th there was there was there was a slight bug in one point five where one of the um, abilities was not going off on the boss, so it was I forget which boss it is off the top of my head, but uh, one I, I think it was the uh, the landmine boss. He uh, one of his abilities wouldn't go off; it would just not make any. It wouldn't do any kind of damage at all. And uh, that was in um, uh, nightmare mode, but it would in hard mode. So it was easier to do the boss in nightmare mode than it was to do in hard mode. But that's the only thing that I uh, that I'm exactly aware of. Yeah, that was a major one. I mean, it caused uh, this sort of kinetic effect. They Bioware sort of talked a little bit about it on their their official forum uh, this week, and basically, or last week, I should say. Uh, and basically, all the only thing that was different was that the the kinetic effect is kind of added right back in, and it, it's causing a little bit of a of a problem for some of the you know raiders that that see this change because there's there's some issues associated with it. But beyond that, um, you know, it's just been it it wasn't working as intended before, and now it's working as intended. And now it's causing people problems. It's kind of mixing up a little bit of the raid strategy because of it. But beyond that, not really much. So Jonathan had this to say, he said, uh, in general, it seems to have worsened a little, but that's mainly because most level 50 players are busy playing around in Sector X and doing the HK-51 missions, uh, which makes getting a full group harder. We all know that pugs tend to not perform as well in operations when compared to well-organized groups who have been farming the operation for a while. So it's actually gotten worse since 1.5 then, right? And if I, if I understand this right, he's sort of... It, is, is he blaming on Pug? Is it Pug's fault? It's HK51's fault. It's totally his fault. Because everybody's, you know, farming. No, I mean, they, well, the same is a little and, confusing, right? I mean, Raid Knight, is it Raid Knight? Raid, Raid Knight's Raid Knight. I mean, why would why would Sector yeah. X or HK51 change that? I don't I don't really understand. No, I, I, go go ahead. Because I, I don't... I, th you that, know, you, the are you with me, Larry? Does, do you, I, I'm, I really I'm totally the... with you. The logic okay, doesn't thank apply. You, thank yeah. you. No, thank you. Thank you. It doesn't really. I mean, it, it, it really hardcore. doesn't. Yeah, not for hardcore guilds, and I certainly haven't done it. So I haven't. Still, I still don't have HK51. 
Uh, and uh, exactly. and, yep. Don't and it's not even hardcore guilds. Let's be real. I mean, my guild's not really yeah. a hardcore gr- guild, and it didn't affect us because, like you know, like Gary said, it's it's uh, raid night is raid night. You do HK fifty one stuff when it's not raid night. Uh, the only thing I mean I can think of is just that people just aren't raiding as often, and maybe those the stragglers left over are trying to pick up pugs, which is just don't do that. Just don't. And I mean, and, and, don't I mean on the other, and the less hardcore group of people who are are running pug raids are also the type of people who are most likely to be doing other stuff. Yeah, we we talked about this. Uh, I don't know how many times in the past that the this, the curve to get your your stuff in the game currently, with how much you actually have to farm through the black hole combinations and a bunch of other stuff, it's kind of a long process. And and Byers commented on that they're kind of adjusting that a little bit as well. And in one point six, we we did this this dive in it on the PTS initially when it first came out, and discovered that they they added the TNE's crystal to get people you know some some idea about you know getting their first set of gear once they reach it, so they they can kind of hop over the, the first tier of gear and just directly go into Ricotta or, or something like that. And so that they don't really have a, a long, that, that long of a, of a leap. But I have to imagine that, you know, with the free to play and everything going on, there, there's mix ups and all that other stuff that, you know, bring confusion as, as far as like, you know, who's going to be available for raiding and as well as, you know, who's geared for, for the, for the raid. So as, more people come in, and you're trying to gear them up. It's going to hopefully over time even it out a little bit more. I don't necessarily buy the the section next stuff, but I'll, so I'll, let, I'll let him his, his no, idea. No, I want to. So I mean, he's the analyst here. So I mean, yeah. it's well organized groups are doing the operation less, is what it seems. But what do you guys think? I mean, do you guys think that that's because that there's other types of content for them to do, or for whatever reason, are these groups just not as interested anymore? Uh, I mean, it, it, for for the I like board, asking I mean, the hard questions. Yeah, I like you're both like, damn, that's a hard question. I don't know. It, it, it does. I mean, it, it really, there's, there, I mean, anything that we say is obviously going to be pure speculation. Sure, and there, sure. But there's nothing. There's, I don't see anything that supports what he's claiming. Is really what it what it boils down to, and he doesn't really back it up either. And I'm not expecting him in like one quote to to totally back every, everything he's saying up, but it's still it's it just doesn't that doesn't uh, follow flow with my logic. I mean, I don't see that it, that Section X has anything at all to do with uh, operations, and and the only thing and why I mean, what are the normal reasons that a um, harder core or progression? Let's just call them progression because. It's not necessarily hardcore. Let's call it a progression raid group. Why are they not doing uh, raids as much anymore? And I mean, there's there's all sorts of reasons. I mean, especially this time of year. Let's get real. I mean, holidays are, holidays are here, so there's less of them. You know, I'm I'm just I think it's just natural reasons. I don't think it has anything specifically to do with HK51 or uh, Section X or anything like that. Speaking of natural reasons, I have a theory. Austin weather has been funky. As of late, I don't know if you noticed this, but it was 80 degrees all this last uh, month, you know, December, and now all of a sudden it's like 20 what or 30. You, well, it's what are you crazy. talking about? People it's don't everybody go outside. Up. It's people mixing don't. everybody up. What is that? You're going to blame <laughs> it on the weather? No, yeah, you wait, know what? You, that makes just you, as much you're, sense. <laughs> you're blaming this on the weather? I thought you were going to take this farther and say it was like Harp or something and taking out Bioware in Austin. Like, I thought you were really going to go for it. Like, yeah, yeah. You're just, yeah, you're just saying that... Just the it's weather. the Hadron Collider. That's what it is. Oh, it's, got it's it. It's the apocalypse. It's the Mayans. They did it. That's Ancient what it is. Are right. It, yep. It's the Mayans. Blame it on the Mayans. Jo- That'll be the next, Jonathan, next week's quote. Jonathan, Jonathan Crow had it wrong. It's not. Well, it, everybody stockpiling it's, it's food and water because everybody knows it's the end of the world. <laughs> so you know that takes some time away from your rating schedule. Doesn't everybody yeah. know that? I mean, come on. Preppers. Uh, he continued by saying, all in all, though, the general trend for explosive conflict and terror from beyond is a gradual decrease of the player death to boss kill ratio, which is what we monitor closely to make sure the operation re- operations remain both challenging and rewarding. I imagine that that's fairly usually the same in every single MMO. The longer content is out, yep. player base gets used to it, they start farming it, it gets a lot easier to do. So, what do you think? Now we've got the free to play people to think about. I mean, those players aren't going to be doing 
operations pretty much hardly at all. Some, but yeah, they're yeah, depending on if they purchase the yeah, right. Do, I would like to meet the person that is ser- the one guy. I'll pay more for sure. That. Yeah. Because yeah. seriously, that guy paid a lot of money to be able to to do operations. Uh, from what what was uh, Jasper's Sweet. thing yes, that he wrote? Yeah, he he wrote. It was yeah. like uh, it would have been like uh, almost fifty bucks. Yeah, yeah, and, do, and it's you know it's, right up front. It's funny too because we didn't bring it up last week, but we heard like anecdotal things from people on our on our site that had spent like two hundred and eighty plus dollars on just cartel packs and all the unlocks. And I'm just wondering, oh my god, why are you, why are you doing that? <laughs> like I don't know why or what same person. And I normally wouldn't wouldn't believe him. I would just say, hey, this is BS. I don't believe you. But they then he posted screenshots. screenshots. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my God, what are you doing?" Yeah, I, I saw some doing? people racking up like six hundred. I saw some people on forums showing screenshots of like six hundred dollars, like dumped into this. I know oh, it's, it's ridiculous. Let me ask Wales. you, Justin. I know again, this this is only in our circles, and of course, we can only kind of you know with who we play with. But how how are what, in your circle of players? How happy are the hardcore raiders right now? <laughs> is that a, well? I'll that say happy, this. Huh? Huh? Should I just, they, just they, move on? They want, they Should want a non answer be always be an answer? <laughs> they want more. Um, uh, Raiders will always want more, regardless of what you give them. Uh, so that's not going to ever change. Uh, however, they, by and large, the, the opinion of TFB and, and also Explosive Conflict or that it was that it was too easy. Uh, the rating itself was just you know kind of here and there. And once they got to that point, they, they were already on farm. Uh, most of the guilds who were any serious about raiding were already on farm within that first uh, week uh, or less, actually, um, depending on depending on the guild, obviously, and, and you know experience comes into that that question. So a lot of them just feel like this sort of TFB experience really wasn't a lot um, as far as like the difficulty level and the, the amount of the amount of time it took them to clear it. Uh, so with that, they're kind of looking into the future, obviously, for free to play stuff, and all they can see right now. Is McKeb coming out, and with with McKeb only being the only option that that's out there at least initially, and we're looking at what February March time frame pro- probably for McKeb or somewhere around there, then they they expect that the the raid is going to be even further down the line. We're probably going to be looking at maybe April or sometime later for for the next raid, and and basically raiders. I had to sum up their their feelings on the matter. They are discontent, is basically what what they are at this point, and unfortunately. Larry, how about in your circle? I know you're not as you know into the progression rating scene, but what do you? What, well, my, what? Um, admittedly, admittedly, my my guild is not as hardcore uh, as uh, as the progression raiders. You know, the hardcore raiders. But I mean, we do we are prog- progressing raiders. We're we're kind of like kind of like Josh's guild. We're months behind. Months you know, behind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, Windows Phone 8. Yeah, we, we do. Uh, for- Go ahead. We do. Uh, it, it, it's, it's pretty, uh, we're pretty content. We're a little bit, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's an interesting mix where the, the hard mode, we, we don't like actually the disparity between story mode and hard mode. There seems to be uh, an enormous difficulty change between those two those two modes. I mean, like for instance, I mean, uh, Toth and Zorn from Explosive Conflict in story mode, we mow through them. I mean, l- seriously, don't even have to think about it. And whereas in in hard mode, it's it, it, it's a, it's a big step up um, because there's a lot more mechanics involved in in taking the, those two down. So I don't know. It's um. I, I think it sits okay, um, but I don't know. I, I know that some people that, at least from comments on Massively and that, that sort of thing, they believe that it's too easy. But uh, I don't know. I think I, I'm all right with it. I'm all right where it's at. All right. Well, next up, Jonathan talked a little bit about why, uh, you know, why players spend so much or much of their time on the fleet, which I kind of like we see this a lot in, in games, but... He said, uh, the fleets are essential areas to our game. Uh, they're where players often go as they wait for war zones or flashpoint groups to be formed. 
Uh, there were players go to trade things on the GTN, do some crafting, and also a place where lots of players like to socialize. All in all, there are many reasons for players spending time on the fleet. We are always looking for ways to minimize time spent on them, though. Um, and I mean, obviously, like I said, if you replace the word fleet for player city in any other MMO, this is like we see this in basically every MMO that's been out for a little while. Um, I don't know what's going on, though. Like, you know, a lot of players would just be online, you know, hanging out as a chat room. I, as Larry, let me ask you this as far as the RP community goes. I mean, is this like a place that the that you find you're spending a lot of time of do a lot of your players in the RP community spend it on the fleet there well shoot uh, as of as of recently when 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 the pop let, let's let's put it this way when the population starts to uh, dwindle down you'll find more more uh, role players on the uh, on the fleet uh, doing their thing there in cantinas quote unquote cantina RP role players know exactly what I'm talking about uh, but uh, then, however, if if there's a uh, if the population is a little larger, a little heavier, uh, you'll find it on on Nar Shada as well. And the reason reason being is because there's a lot of cross faction involvement uh, on Nar Shada on the uh, on the promenade. So it's kind of a uh, it, when when the population's high, it'll be an it'll be an even split between the fleet and and Nar Shada. But those guys that are not role playing. It, everybody's on the fleet. Does it feel like a lot of those people are just kind of like logged in as like almost like a chat room? Like they're just sitting in fleet, just not really playing the game or off, you know, just kind of doing something else and just leaving it logged in? Yeah, I don't know that they're not doing anything. I think most of the people that I've seen are actually waiting for something, whatever it happens to be, or or doing something. Like, uh, I mean, you'll see a lot of people huddled around the uh, PvP terminal, and that's, uh, you know, they're waiting for the queue to pop. That, and Every, it just seems like everybody that's there uh, disappears and reappears, and so they're actually doing something. And then the other people are most likely shopping or waiting for a uh, flashpoint queue or something along that line. I don't think they're not doing anything. Just, yeah, I mean, you they, think uh, it says he, you know, Jonathan says here, and it's interesting to know that he talks about how they're always trying to minimize the amount of time that players are spending on the fleet. And as game developers, they, they don't want you just sitting there in one place ever, right? They want you experiencing their content and exploring the world and doing stuff. So, I don't know, what, what do you, any any idea of what they could do? Do you think that they did they make it sort of too much of a central hub or it's just something you can't really get around? Like, you know, it's basically, I mean, the fleet's their Orgamar or something. You know, there's always people hanging yeah. in Orgamar. Yeah, it's just I don't necessarily think, think the fleets are an issue them as far as, like, how they exist, because they function the same way, like, Orgamar or some you know big capital city would normally um so that that's not really a big issue i think the biggest issue right now is that and some of the people in the chat actually pointed this out a couple seconds ago is that it doesn't really have any soul to it it's kind of bland they kind of look both the the same except like for some difference in color and maybe some some little iconography that may be different but beyond that they're they're pretty much exactly the same and if you remember uh doll around from from world of warcraft the kind of loops of doll, doll around that people would do constantly about, you know, staying in the chat room and just constantly doing loops around it. Same thing in the fleets. Uh, I, I find myself doing that while, you know, queuing up my crew skill missions and, you know, I'll just be on basically for, for a large sense of the time, just, you know, pretty much using it as a chat room uh, what do you, or what do you, um, um, friends messenger. What so. are you looking for though to add more soul? Like, would you want like more activities to do in the fleet, like mini games and things yeah. like that, like you know, Pazak and all that kind of stuff, and sit down and actually have activities? Or do you mean just physically you find the des the design kind of bland and boring? And maybe this is this is more like this is going to sound like uh, Larry talking through me, but I would love to have uh, mini games and have the fleets actually be start to be an extension, like with apartments and you know, kind of. It, it make it have its own soul that you could like have multiple levels and you know have a, a much bigger uh, fleet intact that it would make it feel like a, a secondary home so that you know you're kind of essentially living in like a Ogremar or some main like massive city that you, that you're an inhabitant in instead of you know with your ship docked and you know give it a sense of of, of home along with the the mini games and all the other things that you possibly do they could even do pod racing I'd love to see some sort of um, soup racing stuff, uh, maybe around the, the top, like in a ring or something. Do like a NASCAR circuit where everybody just turns left 
who knows? Uh, you know, the sky's the limit there. But, uh, you know, just give it more soul and, and give it something else uh, beyond just, hey, we have this big loop and that's it. Yep. I almost think back to, I wonder why, like, maybe it feels a little bit drab because do you almost feel like you're forced there as a player because of basically the terminals are there and that's the only reason to get so you, so it's almost like you're forced there to yeah. go. And I'm just, oh, we're going to go back to my SWG days. Larry's going to go right with me. But, you know, Coruscant yeah. was like the hub, but it's not like the designers really kind of made it the hub. It just became yeah. the hub. The players decided that it became the hub. And that's where, like, you know, people who wanted to barter and sell goods and things like that would stand outside of the uh, the spaceport and scream out and shout what they had and stuff. And it became like this whole big, like, social activity right outside. But that happened because the players made it happen. And I'm wondering if part of the reason that the fleet's not working for both of you guys and psychologically is that, like, You've almost been forced to go there and hang out, and I guess it sounds like Larry, you've got you guys have a couple of little places and pockets where you congregate that are outside the fleet. But other than that, you because all the terminals and that kind of stuff is there, and you're waiting for cues to pop. That like you're just there all the time, and this is where you got to go. This is similar to the way uh, you you know you mentioned uh, Cornet uh, on on in SWG. It's similar to the reason that Cornet became a hub is because of how easily easy it was uh, accessed. I mean, Coronet in, in SCBG was the center of, you know, everything. You could go from Coronet to any one of the other planets uh, really, really quickly. And that's that's a very similar situation as with the fleet, is that it is just really, really easy to to access everything. All, all I mean, all the major flashpoints are there, uh, you know, all when you're leveling and all the trainers are there and, and that sort of thing. Whereas the Initially, and Georg Zoller actually had mentioned, um, I forget when it was, it was during one of the conferences or something, that uh, they had actually in intended for the for Drum and Koss and for uh, Coruscant to be the major hubs, but it just didn't work out because it wasn't, um, other things weren't accessible to in those areas like the like the fleet would be. Uh, I just, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I think it is kind of natural. Because if you think about it, there uh, the things that exist in fleet, save for the flashpoint stuff, exist in other places. It exists on Dromacots. It exists on on Coruscant. It's just that it's just so much easier to access on the fleet than it is anywhere else, and so that's where people congregate. Yeah, but it's it's so it's it's kind of weird. I mean, I don't know if you guys remember those first trailers that came out with Coruscant and Dromacots, but. There was a real sense of like world crafting in those trailers. Like the first shot that they had of, the, of Coruscant when they first released that first trailer, um, it, it just it seemed like a world that you know was very, very fleshed out, fulfilled, and that it was something that you know you, you could see yourself you know inhabiting as as a full world. There was like that that it's the idea that there are multiple levels and ex expand all this you know this area, and you'll be on here you know crafting. And even some of the first videos like showed them just doing all their business on Coruscant and all, on Drum and Koss. And that seemed to be left behind in because of the fact of, of the way that they designed the game. They made it so that all these worlds kind of are just linear paths to get through oh, your yeah. story quest stuff. That's what I was just going to get at. I was just going to start bringing up the fact of like, well, we saw that map when people drew like, you're basically yeah. progressing from planet to planet to planet to planet. You're, they, they, they made it go like very, very linear. Like you were on rails pretty much the entire time. Yeah, and so yeah. and there's there's reasons for that from a story standpoint, especially when you're writing this this massive story. And I can understand their reasonings for for backtracking on that stuff, but that doesn't mean it has to like end like that. They can definitely go back and hopefully in, in a long term basis add other stuff to make people want to go to these worlds and, and maybe get rid of the fleet at some point, or at least make it so that there are other options available for people to kind of inhabit. I mean, are you guys even were holding out for like mini games and stuff at this point with all the other things that are sort of on the table and they're working on and the changes? I mean, do you really think we're going to see more mini games implemented? I hope. I, I would. I would. I would hope so. So, do you think it's I, a priority? I want to see. I've kind of forgot. No, I, don't, I, don't, like, I don't think I'm, it's I'm a kinda, priority. I think it's like way down the list of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would. I would agree with that for sure. It, it's. It's probably as Damien kind of mentioned in um in the live stream. Uh, it's it's probably one of those things where if a designer has a day that they can do something in a day, they'll do it. But you know when you're talking mini games or any anything like that, unless it's extraordinarily simple or somebody's doing it on their free time, um, 
it's not it's just not gonna get done i don't think chat is saying blow up the fleet that's what i'm saying <laughs> blow up the fleet <laughs> Yeah, uh, another story thing, reason for it yeah what totally. one other thing you touched on there you, uh, justin was player housing you actually would like you think you think they would ever extend the fleet out to well to I, I think their priority would be you know making sure that the first player housing you know, as far as your ship was fixed before that and i think that would be priority over any sort of player housing inside the fleet but you know, just of things that they could add to make it feel like more of a, of a place that you own, that you inhabit, that, you know, give you a sense of belonging. Uh, you know, if they wanted to make the fleets feel more like that, then they would have to add stuff like that, that that would be a priority for them or ha would have to be a priority for them if they intended to go about that way. What do you guys think of the ships in general? Do you think that they, they kind of succeed in design? I think they're nice. I think that. Uh they need more to it. They need, they need stuff um, to make them more personal. Uh, and for, for instance, there's, there's stuff you can add to your ships, like, uh, you know, uh, test dummies and that, that sort of thing, combat dummies. Um, it'd be really nice if I could put that combat dummy wherever I want it instead of a pre-designated place that somebody at Fireware decided that that's where that belongs. Um, I, I think I think things to make even like trophy rooms and, and that sort of thing would be really, really cool to be able to add to, even if it, even if it's like, um, I forget which game does it to where, uh, only certain, certain things can only go in certain places, but you can still move them around within this specific area. I would like to see something like that. I think it might actually be free realms or not free realms. Uh, the other one, the clone wars adventures that does that where you can actually move things around like furniture and whatnot, but, it can only be in designated areas, which I'm perfectly fine with. And not, I don't think it's exactly to that level that I'm thinking of, uh, because that's pretty, that's pretty damn cool. But uh, maybe that that's definitely a, a step. That would be a huge step in the right direction, if you ask me. I find it interesting because I, I'm, I've always been a huge fan of player housing. And ever since old school, older school MMOs, most MMO developers have kind of really shied away from it. And I think that they've really felt that their the retention or the return on investment of how much it would cost them to develop such things just were not worth it. And it was probably time better spent, you know, creating another raid or, you know, another dungeon or something like that. And they've never really invested yeah. in it. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to segue, but it's perfect, right? I have spent so many hours in dimensions in rift I, it's crazy like and i'm sorry it's it's i've spent a, an obscene number of hours building stuff in there so if if the if the motivation is behind getting people like to to be in your game doing stuff i don't i i'm, I'm kind of I, I, maybe just maybe just they i don't know maybe rift just got it right and maybe the other companies never saw it before but i kind of laughed that a lot of the other companies felt that it was never really worth their time and money. And then this came, and I think until Minecraft came along, it was like, and then I think the trying people looked at that and they were like, wow, people are spending insane amounts of time building stuff. Let's see what happens. I don't know. I wonder, I wonder if companies like Bioware and these other companies might, might have a, uh, you know, a turn in, in their thought process here and realize that if they do it right, a lot of people would, would build stuff. I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to know if it, if something like Dimensions is for uh, the niche audience, like you know, like you and me, Gary. I mean, I would definitely spend hours on end building stuff, but I, I consider myself very uh, niche as far as that is concerned. Uh, I think that there, I think a, the vast majority of players aren't going to spend time doing that. I don't. I don't. It's, I think you're wrong. I. I, I think I. I uh, Seriously, I've been spending a bunch of time in, in 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 dimensions, and by far, I think it is probably the I, I think it's probably the biggest hit in the entire expansion for Tryon. I think the Storm Legion expansion's got a tons of great stuff. I'm going to talk about it in a minute because it's crazy. But there, two point one is already coming out. They're already releasing another uh, another twenty man raid. You a little bit jealous there, uh, Justin? <laughs> the expansion's been out for like a month and they've got a 20-man raid coming. Like, like I think like December or something. I don't know. Anyway, 
Um, when you see the number of dimensions that are on the list, and actually, actually starting tomorrow, this is a perfect time to tell you guys, but starting tomorrow, we're doing something called uh, Tuesday's Top Dimensions. And I've gone in, and there's so many people making these things. There's a list of them, and you could just go through them and you go check them out. So I started picking like two dimensions. I'm going to pick two dimensions a week, and I did a little video on them and kind of walk you through them and stuff like that. So I'm gonna, we're going to put that out tomorrow so you guys can check that out and look at what they're building. Uh, I don't think it's that niche because you can build anything, which is like, you know, if you wanted to build a, a RP guild house, sure. But then if like, you're not into that and you're into like more gamey kind of stuff, people are building jumping puzzles and, and mazes and things like that. So you may build a guild house, Justin may build a game. I don't, I don't see why other, I, I don't know. Yeah, no, I get, I, I, I mean, say, go ahead. I, I would say that Bioware has, I mean, if you go back and look at all their games, uh, they have designed after coder specifically, uh, they found a thing that works, and then they templated that out, and every single game after that has been pretty much the same game ever since. It's a linear path. It's the same sort of thing where you save the galaxy. You're responsible for doing that. You know, you are the Neo. You are mm -hmm. the, the Christ figure, uh, basically. And they've designed games like that ever since, and all their stories, all their planets, all their sort of progression paths throughout the game have been like that and, and they certainly need to start you know looking at other other approaches and and, and maybe re going going back to the drawing board on a lot of this stuff because it was good back then uh, however well, a lot I of think, this stuff is, is i think sort it's of still good would you disagree yeah. that it's still i think it's still good in single player yeah, format yeah. games i mean like i love yeah. the mass effect series still you know you know little differences aside i think it, what they tried to do is they tried to almost create that experience in an mmo and yeah. it didn't work yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, when I play a but single I, player I, I, game, I, I, I want I want to be the hero. Like that's that's I the role I, I want to watch a movie yeah. and be as interactive as possible. Sorry, go ahead. I I don't know if if it, if I would say it failed <laughs> per se, but I would say though that it it succeeded in one area, and unfortunately, some of the other areas, like the rating, like the sort of investment in the world, that stuff, like was left behind, and that comes from the fact that they of the way that they originally designed these games and how they approach game design uh, over a long period of time. And, you know, that certainly didn't really work very well for an MMO, but uh, at the same time, I still think the story stuff is really good. It's, it's by far one of the, it's by far the best story experience that I've experienced. But on the other end, on a lot of this other stuff that we expect from MMOs uh, as, as traditional MMOs, it's just not there. So people are left feeling like, okay, this is kind of weird. I don't know if I if I necessarily like this. Depending on on who you are, what type of person, what type of fan you are. If you're a fan of Bioware games, yeah, you'll love it. But at the same time, for MMO fans, some of that stuff is just really missing on the edge and really needs to hopefully come in at some point. All right, well, really quick, I'm gonna I brought it up before, but I'm gonna talk a little bit more about Rift and uh, what they've got coming up. Uh, this just in today, actually. This is awesome. I'm gonna bring this up here. There's a new trailer dropped today. So like I was saying, Justin, not to rub it in here, but uh, yeah, Storm Legion just dropped like, you know, I don't know, about a month ago or so. And uh, on December 12th, they have update 2.1 already coming, and it's got a 20-man raid included, a uh, whole new chronicle, the Feyula event begins, and ready, guys, mark your calendars. If you guys have played Rift, I know a lot of you out there probably tried Rift when it came out. Mark your calendars. Get out your pen. Get out your pen. Do people use pens? All right, get out your notepad. December 14th, starting at 12 uh, a.m. PST, going through December 18th at 11.59 PST, all former subscribers of Rift are going to be able to log into Rift and check out all of Storm Legion for absolutely free. They're going to give you four days to check out the entire expansion for free. Mark your calendars. It is uh, December 14th through December 18th. That just came out today. I guess, uh, when does this drop? This, uh, oh yeah, so this drops on December 12th. So all this stuff will be in there as well. So two new 20 man raid, new chronicle, all that good stuff. Um, new, uh, trailer up here on Game Breaker TV. If you want the front page, go or check that out as well. Brand new trailer. Uh, if you guys have not checked it out, go over to stormlegion.com. There's a ton of info there. Uh, you know, two new huge continents, uh, brand new huge city. You've got 10 more levels, four more souls, uh, seven dungeons, three raids, new chronicle. And of course, we were talking about Dimensions, which is their version of player housing. And actually, yeah, don't forget about tomorrow as well. Tuesday, 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 uh, we'll be dropping Tuesday's Top Dimensions. So check, look for that on Game Breaker TV this Tuesday for our first two where 
you guys get to vote on which one's the best and maybe win something. All right, so there's some more uh, interesting quotes here from Mr. Damian Schubert. It's like I almost forgot he was still there. That man I really will never did. Leave, so I really did. Like I saw his name and I was like, "Wow, what well, didn't isn't he gone?" Uh, first up, Larry Everett. He has been. Chat it's bubbles. Austin this is your moment, Larry. This is your moment, Larry. Chat bubbles. Here it is, bro. Here is your moment. It's finally here. We've been waiting 116 episodes. Damien Schubert had this to say about chat bubbles. He says, we still do not have an ETA for the implementation of this feature. But we're definitely aware it's something players want. He says, uh, we did attempt an aver a version of chat bubbles once. Uh, but they introduced some severe server performance issues and we'll need to address that before they can be implemented. Thanks for your patience. Thanks, Larry. You feel impatient? Wow. Uh, a year is pretty patient. Yeah. I agree. We Wasn't it last week we were talking about possibly, I think I brought up performance issues could be the issue? Yeah. yeah. Uh if if I'm not mistaken, this this is uh, the, I'm, I could be completely wrong about this, but if I'm not mistaken, the uh, the the way that the hero engine renders chat bubbles because it's default, it's within the hero engine because several of the other games that run off the hero engine have chat bubbles. Uh, the way that it does it, it appears as if they are objects in the world, similar to the reason why there was lag on Ilum because of laser bolts being fired from something off screen. It's it's something similar to that. So there's I I understand conceptually the reason why there's no chat bubbles, but practically it's been a freaking year, guys. And, and it's and it's hard to kind of let slide because it's it's such an odd issue and it's it's beyond standard yeah. in other MMOs. So I think that's why it's a little right. bit hard to sort of wrap your head around. You're like, okay, I get it. It's a problem. Sure. Fine. I'm the player. I don't really care. I, I just don't know. I've never liked chat bubbles. I think they take up too much of the world space. I don't really think they're good in any way, shape or form. I like whenever it's an option, I turn them off. So I couldn't be more diametrically opposed to them adding it in. But for those people, as long as you can turn them off, I'll I'll be happy with it. I guess that's interesting. Yeah, I was gonna say you could always turn them off, and I I'm not I'm not an RPer. I imagine the RPers definitely like them, but I've always actually really liked them on. I liked being in an area and just seeing really? what people, and I won't watch, and I kind of almost turn off general chat or don't look at it ever because that's just like just toxic yeah. waste dump of just filth. So I don't really even look at that, and that's like seriously, if I can nuke general chat, I would just be gone. But I do like to see what people are kind of talking about in the general area. And if I had them, I'd totally leave them on in MMOs. I, I imagine you yeah. do as well, Lair. Yeah, absolutely. And and the reason the the reason that I like them and, and it hasn't really it's not directly related to uh, being able to have a conversation, but it's also but it's more to do with spatial awareness. It's something that we have in real life. We are aware of where sound is coming from, where people are speaking from, just you know, because of and we hear it, oh, somebody over here is talking, or somebody over here is talking. Well, we don't have that same kind of spatial awareness whenever we have just a scroll of chat going by. And so it, 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 it actually, believe it or not, for me, and it's not the same for everybody, but, but for me, it actually kills a lot of my immersion to have to read from general chat. Okay. Or what something along think, that line. What do, you, what do you guys think about spatial voice? Like I've been playing a lot of Planet Side Two, and they've got the spatial voice in there, where you just, you know, as you run around, you hear people on the left of you, the right of you, and they get closer to you, and you can all just chat. And it's all built right into the client. What do you think about that? And in, in sort of a more, it, it works great. Did, well, right now it's a little buggy in Planet Side Two, but it was great yeah. in beta when it was working. There's an issue with it right now. Hopefully they got it fixed, but <laughs> it was great in beta. It is there was awful. a point, it is but the there was a point that it was thing. great. But do you guys not no. like that? You don't it was, like it? It was, never, it was never good. I, it, I think it's it, great. It, yeah, it, it did never. It did never seem when I was doing it in beta, when I was messing around in beta and uh, Planet Side Two, it didn't quite seem to work. If it, you know, if, really? it if it worked, it, it did, but it didn't. I mean, it was, and if it got him to work really well, it's great where, for trolling. Look, I, I love Planet Side Two. <laughs> I, I love Planet Side Two, but to your point, Gary, the only 
things that I've seen it ever be used for ever in any sort of context, even in, in like an outfit and platoon setting, is so that somebody can come up to you and spam Tupac and B.I.G. songs. And that's pretty much it. Oh, really? Yeah, that are I style really, songs. A, I haven't really had that happen. We actually, we actually, I mean, we still kind of use it. I mean, we're all, we're playing pretty regularly. We were all on vent, but uh, if we see like another group or something and we kind of want to, you know, form a quick alliance, we, we jump on it and use it and it kind of works out. Yeah, well, I, I play that game a lot. I put in like seven days worth of time so far. Wow. What battle rank are you? And uh, 40. So. Damn. Yeah, it's uh, pretty high up there, but yeah, it's a great, uh, it's, it's a great game. It's, it's, it's a great game. It's it really phenomenal. Is. Like it yeah. really is. I mean, they, I, I've been playing it a ton. They've really <laughs> killed it. It's great. Yeah, no, it, it's good. The, the the voice chat stuff is not. No, I turned that stuff off immediately. How much money did you spend so far? I've already spent more than the game would have cost me. Oh geez, yeah, I spent uh, the the money on the the alpha pack and then like an extra twenty bucks so far. That's it. I, I'm so like sixty like, bucks. Yeah, I've unlocked pretty much everything I need. So, yeah, I haven't even begun to unlock everything I need, but I just, yeah, I, they so got it right. They just keep, I just yeah. keep buying station. Yeah, they just right. keep burning, burning my wallet, just poof up in smoke. It's yeah, great for them. If and I, if everyone I, had, I know, like, secondary every, characters. Everyone I know is spending money on the game. It's like it, it is such a great model for free to play games. Star Wars, I'm looking at yeah. you uh, to sort of figure out what psychologically works for the gamer and like why you actually want to spend money in a game. I just. As soon as I started playing it, after like, you know, about two days, I was like, I'm easily throwing money at this game. It works. All right, I'm going to stop talking about Planet Side 2. Can we start Planet Side 2, show? No, it, it, is, it is good to kind of talk about, I mean, in the scope of free-to-play, because I mean, you have two separate, you know, systems and designs on free-to-play, and one, well, one is obviously better received by the average public than the other, uh, and and it's plain to sort of see in that in that, that mindset, and, and we we've, we've always talked about like whether they'll they'll go back to the drawing board and some of these things, and maybe reassess where where their stuff is. And buyer was obviously listening on that stuff because they've changed a bunch of stuff so far. So hopefully they'll continue to do that and and maybe reexamine their model uh, going forward. I, the last thing I would want Bioware to do with their free to play model uh, going forward is make it stagnant and make sure that it never evolves. As long as it continues evolving and, and progressively gets easier in some of the requirements, especially at end game, then I think people will, you know, overwhelmingly adopt it once that stuff comes out. But the initial impression, at least between these these couple free to play games that came out, you know, recently, has been, well, so Tor does their stuff, but kind of, eh. um, and then Plants I Two does their stuff, but it, yeah, it's freaking awesome. You can kind of play everything I you want. But I think so, this really good. I, I I have the my my fear is that this really goes back to a game like Planet Side Two was designed from day one to be free to play. They they had everything yeah. with that in mind of how the guns were purchasable, the scopes were not the the like. And I'm not saying they can't retrofit games to make something like this work, but I think that's why it also works so well is because they were thinking of this day one. And I think any of the MMOs that come along later on that have to like bolt this on, they just have a lot harder of a time to get that balance and feel right because they weren't set up like that. I'll tell you guys right now, you want my opinion, Lara, especially for you. If you ever want to get anything close to what SWG was, it's gonna be Planet Side Two. Not today. No. I'm telling you. Telling you. I'm telling you, Smedley is all about SWG emergent gameplay. I'm telling you, there's going to be player cities. There's going to be like transport vehicles. There's going to be crafting. There's going to be resources. Like all the stuff I think we love from Star Wars Galaxies is going to be yeah, in ever, Planet Side 2 as an next. FPS. Well, that's going to be next. off the guy. The yeah, ideas same. they want to do for that are insane. They, <laughs> the ideas for EverQuest <laughs> next. In a fantasy setting, yeah. yes. I, I do. I think, I think SOE's finally realized that they had. Uh, gold there, except that the code was just completely spaghetti, and that the yeah. the some of the the philosophies behind the game were sound, just wasn't executed properly. Uh, so I don't know if you want sci-fi, if you could deal with the FPS, man. I'm telling you, it's our SWG, man. That's, that's our SWG. All right, next up, Damian Schubert talked about neutral gear. If you guys are still waiting for this. He said the implementation of this feature isn't planned for the immediate future but that it's still something we want to do. Uh, when we add it, you can expect a variety of gear for neutral aligned players. Is this, is this something you guys, were you guys looking for this? Anybody, anybody still looking for this? 
Well, seriously, is it still a problem? I don't know. That's like, why I'm asking. I I, I kind of uh, had the same sigh that you have. They took a request. Like, the weird thing is, is back when, when this game first came out, they had the requirements on it for a lot of the in-game stuff. And they took that out. And then, I guess, forgot that they still had issues along the way with, with the other stuff that's still there. Um, some of the level up uh, relics and uh, other stuff that still require some of the you know points on there. So I'm just I'm left like wondering. Okay, seriously, why why is this still an issue? Because they they realized it was an issue before. They fixed that one, and now they're still having this issue with the other crowd. It's just yeah, it's. I don't know. I throw my hands up. Just get rid of them. It, it makes no sense to have those requirements on that that those pieces. It makes no sense at all. It, I don't, I don't care. You know what? Leave them on. The ones that they're on, just leave them on. Who cares? You get, nobody uses them. Seriously. I, okay, I'll, I'll give credit to Larry. Yeah. yeah nobody, right. nobody uses them. Seriously. I mean, sure, if you run into one as you're leveling up or you get some extra money or something and you want to go spend it on the dark side vendor or whatever or light side vendor, sure, go, go right ahead. But you know what? And, and when the at the end of the game, nobody's using those. Nobody is using the, the dark side or light side relics. Uh, you know, and, and in fact, e even the matrix cubes, really, uh, you don't even really need those anymore. I mean, that's I mean, all the effort that they went into de designing the systems that revolve around the, the relics and dark side and light side stuff, and and uh, yeah, the shards and all that stuff just. Yeah, and it's it, a and it, it's such a story driven concept, right? I mean, I almost wonder, yeah. like, you know, should gear come into play here at all? Yeah, I, I think in the level up game where it is the most um, controversial, most uh, beneficial, whatever the case, um, that is that's that's okay. Throw it in there. That's fine. That's where it is now. Keep it right there. It's your in your level up content. That makes that you know that kind of gets you into the. It could possibly let me put it this way: it could possibly get you into the mood uh, and of the setting and that sort of thing. And like, oh, I can't use this this lightsaber because it it's light side, you know. And I you know, I can't use this you know ancient relic because it's in 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 bowed and bowed with the light side that sort of thing. But you know, once you hit uh, you know, once you hit fifty, it doesn't really yeah, make, it's, make a difference. It's kind, of, it's kind of annoying to kind of get that that one drop on on those things. But fair fairness, you can just go purchase the freaking relics from the vendor, anyways. Like if you absolutely need them, you can go there do it go. And, or well, buy them for the GTN. Like I just like Larry where said, would, I don't know. Where would we really be without the deal. cash shop? But where would we be without the cash <laughs> shop? But yeah, I don't know about it, you guys. It, I, I don't know, you know, that the level one fantasy axe really reflects the struggles, you know, of my Jedi, my hardships. Yep. No, well, that's game. it. That's what, that's what everybody needs to do to show that they are, you know, willing to give up everything as a Jedi is to go buy an axe. that axe that you use to chop down trees as your weapon to fight the Sith. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's do some viewer questions really quick. I want to tell you guys about a great deal we got going on with Audible. If you guys have not checked out Audible, make sure to go over to audible.com slash game breaker. We have got a free book and 30 day trial with your name on it. I want you to try out Audible today free, absolutely free for 30 days. And you're going to get a free audio book just by using the URL audible.com slash game breaker. Uh, if you've never checked it out, it's audiobooks. You know, you download the app, you put it on your iPhone, your Android, your uh, it works with Kindle Fire, Windows Phone, all those devices. Uh, you throw it on there, sign up for an account, get a free book. Uh, there's actually a bunch of other free books on there as well, as we found out from Olivia. She's learning uh, Swedish. There's a bunch of educational books and stuff that are absolutely free. But they're going to actually give you a free audiobook just by using that audible.com slash gamebreaker URL. So if you haven't checked it out, make sure to go over today and sign up, sign up, sign up. All right, let's do some viewer questions. So first up, this one from Ellie Breyer. Uh, Ellie says, is there any way we're going to be able to tell how well SWOTOR is doing now that it's gone free-to-play? Do you think BioWare is going to give us any kinds of numbers going forward? Or is judging by server population the best we can do? Larry, you're usually the one, you, well, both you guys hit the earnings calls and all that kind of stuff, but what do you think? Uh, what kind of information do you think they're actually going to put out to the investors now that it's free? 
Uh, I think that investors are going to want to know initially, you know, how how is free to play doing, uh, and and that sort of thing. Is are we still making money off of this game? To which EA is going to say, yes, we have this many new players signed up, or something along that line. Some obscure number that, whenever you know, you narrow it down to the try to this narrow is it down. Our to just rate. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, but they're, that's like they're, yeah, they're not gonna, they're never gonna, they're never gonna divulge any sort of like cash shop numbers, what right, they're bringing no. in, and and they're gonna spin the amount It'll of be, people playing the game like in some whacked out way to get some like it's yeah, a, totally. Same way that it's gonna be does. this many items has sold on the cash shop, and we have you know yeah, this it's much it's of a task some, rate, like you know stuff like that. Yeah, yeah for sure. I, yeah, that's what it's gonna be, and and then we'll hear nothing more about it. I'm sorry. You think it's going to so be? Do you think it'll be dropped off the earnings calls completely, where they won't even have to report about it? I don't think that's going to happen. They're going to have to say something. They'll probably have a regular check-in. Maybe. I, honestly, Maybe. I don't. I. I honestly. I mean, after this last one, you know, if this is they if kind of this avoided, last one, yeah. they like completely avoided Spotor altogether on this last earnings call. So I, I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe we'll hear it the next two, but after that, yeah, I don't think so we're going to hear it. Let's keep up on that. Then. Maybe for fair. next. What's up? To, to be to be fair, they they kind of avoided the question during that earnings call because they were in the process of transitioning to free to play. Like that was the whole reason. At least the reason yeah. that they gave. Whether they continue that or not is the question. All right, we'll have right. to see. And maybe, so we'll keep up on that. We got to watch the earnings calls, but maybe in a follow up as well. I mean, the only other way that we can kind of gauge some of this stuff is obviously by looking at server pops and seeing what they they mm -hmm. rate as. And then I I know people freak out when we look at X Fire and Raptor, but. It, it, it's not a gauge of seeing how many people are playing a game specifically, trends. but you you can see trends, and they they definitely are. They're fuzzy, yes, but they still there is some sort of data there to be looked at. So maybe we can look at that in the next week or two. Uh, well, next we, up, from yeah. Simon, what's up? I was going to say we have there is tourstatus.net that is a rough like 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 you said shows trends uh, that that bases everything. It's similar to the Rift status. Uh, which basically just shows are you are you on heavy are the servers heavy yeah uh, uh, or very heavy full whatever it rates all of those and and gives it it gives trends for those and I mean obviously we are extremely high right now and everybody is uh, every everybody but like two or three are seeing a gain uh, of um, in in population so I th I think that it, so far it's doing okay. But we're also at the holidays too, so I'll, I'll wait to get some solid numbers. There's also that Austin year. weather. Don't forget about the weather in Austin. Oh, the country. Austin yeah, weather. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that's and awesome there's weather. also you know Section X. You know that's yeah. also in raids. Uh, next up, Simon Francis <laughs> says, uh, "Do you think Bioware is ever going to go in as drastic a direction as a third faction, or alternatively, going through the effort of making the story work for faction changes, Jedi becoming Sith, etc., etc., etc.?" Justin, what do you think? Uh, no, no. Okay, Larry, what do you think? <laughs> do I want them to? Absolutely. No, that, was, that wasn't do, the question. Are they going to? Probably not. Yeah, they. Uh, I mean, I, I actually had it. Uh, I read this question before the show, and I was talking to a friend of mine about it. And man, we, we there is definitely ways they could do it, but the return on how much you know how much is going to be gained by spending all that time creating a third faction versus you know how how many people are actually going to use it or what what kind of return uh, increase in revenue and that sort of thing that they're going to get from it is really nil when it comes down to it so we, we highly doubt that they're ever going to have a third faction put in I'll one up your no Justin and say no 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 <laughs> third oh, okay all right see. Uh, ben White says, do you expect anything special to happen for the one-year anniversary of the game uh, coming up soon? Personally, I, I don't classify the complimentary fireworks as special. And to this, I'll say... Um, fireworks. It'll be, it'll but be fireworks running. aren't special? <laughs> Come on. I think, it's an uh, yeah. I think it's an anniversary celebration that the servers are still on. I think that should be enough. You should just be happy. <laughs> no, I, I think they, have, they obviously have Life Day coming up. Probably in the next week we'll hear about that. If not tomorrow, when 1.6 goes up, um, I would expect that the cartel market would be flooded with the life day stuff either tomorrow or by in the next week. 
So, and, and if it comes next week, that would seem a lot rather late because that wouldn't seem like it would be long enough for an event like that. But you know, as far as like a holiday event, the first holiday event plus the fireworks stuff, maybe that gives them some sort of rejoicing. I don't know, maybe a video as well. To look back at all the, I don't know, stuff they did. Yeah, chat room is a good point. I wonder if I wonder if fireworks are going to cause as much lag as chat bubbles would. Hmm. The funniest thing is they they say twenty five stacks in the post, uh, which would would mean to me as a person who plays MMOs a lot that that would be ninety nine, you know, uh, fireworks and then twenty five sets of those to I me, think, not twenty five. It's twenty five, bro. You're not. Gonna I, get I know it. it's twenty five, but I'm just saying, like, if they gave us twenty five stacks and ninety nine, then holy hell, I would totally agree with you that that would cause a bunch of lag. <laughs> Cause all people would do is like put on their number key and just run around. Larry, just do you think you're seeing anything else besides the, the, the laggy fireworks? Mm, no, life day stuff, like Justin said, and that's on the cartel market. So uh, I think that, that that's really all we're going to see. I mean, if we see if we see videos going over the last year, that would be hilarious. In fact, Bioware put that together right now because I really want to see it. Because uh, a, retros be a, a retrospective this look back on retrospective look. Sports. This guy's not with Bioware anymore. This guy's not with Bioware anymore. This guy over here isn't either. That'd be great. Justin, <laughs> follow him on the Twitter at Zirak, Z I R A K. And of course, go over to DarthHater.com, DarthHater, DarthHater, DarthHater for all your Star Wars The Old Republic news. And Mr. Larry Everett, he's in a black hole. Jump to light speed. Follow him on Twitter at Shadow S H A D D O E, and go over to Massively.com and read the hyperspace beacon every single yes. week over there on Massively. 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 Uh, you can follow me on the Twitter at Gary Gannon. You can follow Gamebreaker TV at Gamebreaker TV, and we'll be back all week for more shows, more shows, more shows. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. We'll see you soon.